It's Saturday morning. I am going to do some old Christmas tree yarn. Um, I've done this, it was probably like, I don't know, three, four years ago, and my mom requested it. So we're going to do a batch. Most of it will go into the shop. But one of the things that we need first is ties, because I have to tie the hanks up um, 10 times each, so I need a lot. So we're going to wrap this 50 times. Okay, I gave it a couple extra. This is my gratitude journal. <laughs> We're just gonna slip it off. And the yarn that I like for this is sugar and cream. Um, or is it, yeah, sugar and cream, not peaches and cream. And it's their worsted cotton. I want something a little thicker so it'll leave a bigger resist spot. Um, that is what when I did it last time, I was trying to demonstrate how to make a speckled, like a resist speckled yarn, because they were really popular right then. But, oh, Christmas tree is going to be popular every year, so. So this is like 106 ties. I need 10 per hank, and I have bread in the oven. The bread comes out, we'll go out to the barn and get the hanks ready, and get them dying in their base color. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and tie these up. I got my ties. Um, I don't know where I'm gonna put you, but I will put my camera somewhere so you can see me. And it's just time to do it. I have avoided it because I don't like this next step, but we're doing it. Get it over with, right? Rip the band-aid off. When I do this, I do it no more than two per pan. So I'm gonna have to keep grabbing pans for this. I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but I picked a different base this time and it has silver sparkle in it, but it is a sock yarn. When I do this, I, you guys know I don't gatekeep. I teach you how to do stuff. I always figure some people are still gonna buy stuff from me because they're not gonna wanna do this themselves. So I'm gonna take 10 out. And then when I tie them, if I can, I tie them in a bow if I've made them long enough. And then I don't tie the whole hank in every spot. So I'll try to grab like roughly half, but I want it to be random. Oh, I gotta start the, the kettle too. Ideally it's a bow to make it easier to take out. And I want 10 ties on each one because I mix up five colors for lights and I want two spots for each color. The goal is to just make them very random. I don't try to space them evenly. I don't care if I get every single yarn in that half that I grab. Sometimes, too, I get lighter spots where the hank is like originally tied, and I just use those as well. Um, you might wonder, why do I tie a bow? Because it does take longer, but when you're taking them out, if you're cutting them all because they're knotted, it is scary and you really give yourself a lot more um, opportunity to accidentally cut a hank. Ooh, that's real close to... So my goal is to not have to cut at all. So yeah, it does take a little longer to do it this way. <clears throat> We're almost done with the first one. And the randomness helps. Okay, so there's one. I'm gonna set it aside and tie the second one in here. Do I wanna do two in a pan with the greens? 
because we're gonna over dye this green and then dye the colored lights. I'm gonna set this aside, do a second one, and then we'll be back to do the green. Okay, the water's boiling, the second one's tied. I'm gonna put these in together. Like I said, it's only two per pan because I want to control how much dye goes in here. And I'm going to use two different colors of green. And I'm going to use a lot of green. I really want this to be dark so that when like there's over dye of the red onto the like, just for an example, onto where those red lights are going to show up and it bleeds onto the green, I don't want it to be so noticeable. So we're gonna use a lot of dye. It's gonna seem like too much, but you gotta trust me. If it's not enough dye, we will come back, flip these hanks around and make sure that they're covered in green. They need to be fully covered in green. smush it all down in the green. Okay, these are my heat proof gloves. John got them on Amazon for me. It's like usually three colors. So that is ready to go on the burner and I will bring you guys back when we check if I need to add dye and then if not, when we take the ties off and we go to the next step. Okay, we're going out to check the yarn. <laughs> My prediction is that it's gonna be borderline, barely enough green or maybe I'll have to add more green to it. Okay. This is why when people tell me they just go ahead and use the same dye on, on cotton yarns, I'm like, don't do that. See how they turn blue? Because those strings are just cotton. Oh my gosh, it's plenty dark. Right? Dark enough for me. Oh, so my prediction was wrong, but it's wrong in a good way. Yay. Yay. Love to be wrong today. Way. Okay, so next we gotta start taking the ties off and putting the dye on the bare spots. So when I do these, I mix the colors really, really light. And what's nice is I already have some red all mixed, but it's really strong, so I only want a little bit. And then I will be mixing five colors, just like the old, oh, I'm spilling, old-fashioned Christmas lights. 
like when I was a kid, it was a red, orange, yellow, green, and blue. So now we separate each hank. It is so sparkly. Oh my gosh. But the sparkle died. It's green, but I love it. For the rest, I just take two ties off each hank and dye them one of the colors. So 10 ties, two on each, five colors. You do the math. You can start to see what it's gonna look like with the colors, but I'll show you when the hank's all done. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see how sparkly this is. I'm thinking not. Oh yeah, you can see right there. It's very sparkly and it's perfect. I cannot wait to keep one of these.